Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are diving into YouTube analytics. Welcome to Shelly Saves the Day. My channel is here helping you create content so you can share what you love with the world. If that sounds good to you, give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Would love to have you be part of the squad. Today we are tackling analytics and it is honestly the best source of truth there is when it comes to YouTube. Analytics don't care about your feelings. YouTube does not care about your feelings and how hard you work to create something. What it cares about is numbers and that's what it provides to you. So if you've been scared and you haven't looked at your analytics because it's been too daunting and overwhelming to understand what these numbers mean, I totally get it. They give you a lot of information. I'm going to break it down into three things that I feel that you should start off with knowing about analytics. So the first one is going to be CTR. And what is CTR? CTR is referring to click-through rate. So what they're going to do is, you know what, we're going to go into the analytics of a video here. Hold on one second. Let me just pop up, up here. All right, now that we're here, this is the analytics for my channel. So when you're in here, what we're looking for first, click-through rate. That is the number of times that someone saw your thumbnail, whether it be from the homepage, browse, suggested, and they saw it and then they decided to click on it. So they're going to give you a percentage. And if you take anything away from this video, just know that if you're below a 2% click-through rate, you should change your thumbnail. And what you're looking for is somewhere between a 2% and 10%. If you can get into double digits, that is the goal. That thumbnail is doing great. Don't touch it. So one thing that you can also do to test to see how your click-through rate is happening, if you happen to have TubeBuddy and you are on the Legend version, if you log into TubeBuddy, I was running a thumbnail test, which is an A-B comparison, which is I upload two different thumbnails and then it cycles through. TubeBuddy will let you know with some certainty which thumbnail it thinks, or historically, it looks like people are clicking on more. So this is a really great way for you to be able to test to see if you're trying to do two different styles of thumbnails. I just thought this was really interesting. If you guys wanna sign up for a TubeBuddy, there is a link in the description. You can always get a 20% discount or on any paid level of service for however long you wanna stay with them, or you can always start for free. So go get that tool because we've talked about it a lot already and for a lot of the examples I've been using TubeBuddy. So you may wanna take a peek at that. All right, so we're gonna go back into the YouTube analytics here though, and then we're gonna click down and on the see more, and then it's gonna bring you 50 videos. So the cool thing is it's gonna show you the 50 videos and just look at the column that is for click-through rate or CTR. So you can see a whole bunch of these different videos. They can range anywhere from you know a 14% down to a 1.7%. So those are the thumbnails that I would wanna go in and take a look at. And one really great way to do this is just go into the YouTube search bar and type in the video topic that you have for one of your underperforming thumbnails. And then go look at what the competition is doing and seeing if you notice any patterns that you can like steal ideas from. I don't wanna get into a whole thing about thumbnails. I have an entire video about it under style. And if you are interested in that, I will link that video up here in the card somewhere so you can go take a peek at it. If you see that you have a lot of thumbnails that have a very high click-through rate, you may wanna look at those thumbnails and see what is it that you're doing, if there's any consistent theme or pattern that you can continue to do on other thumbnails. The second YouTube analytic that I want you to pay attention to is going to be average view duration. So what they're doing is they're taking a look at your video and they're averaging out against all month how long most of the time people are watching your videos, each of your videos. So in this particular instance, if you look at mine, mine is actually fairly low. It's two minutes and eight seconds. But you do see that little arrow right there with that is pointing up. That is telling me that over last month, people are watching for longer than they did last month. So the point is you wanna try and get people to watch your video for longer than they did or longer than the average so that that number goes upwards. You don't wanna see it going downwards. So a few things that you can do to see why your average view duration is not as high. Look at the length of your videos. That could have something to do with it. If all you make are one minute videos, then of course that is gonna drive that average down, right? So is it worth it to make longer form content that's still entertaining? Maybe, but on the other hand, you don't wanna have a super long video that people don't watch a lot of because if that actual percentage viewed is not very high, that's also a signal to YouTube that maybe it's not the best video that they should be pushing if people only watch like 10% of it. I hope that makes sense to you. If that makes sense, give me a thumbs up in the comments or on this video, okay? So once you're looking at your average view duration, what's really good is to go into one of your videos and then you can see where people start to drop off and when. So is that a place where you could place a card? Could you do a graphic on the screen? Could you, like what was it that made people like start to not watch anymore? So in some of mine, it was when I went to a screen and I was showing you a tutorial of some kind, 
people lost the eye-to-eye -eye connection that we had and I would see a very large dip of when people would leave when the screen recording would come on. So that tells me that I need to try something different so that I can get my average view duration up. The third YouTube analytic that I want you to pay attention to is the 50% cliff. What does that mean? I'm gonna tell you right now. What you wanna aim for is at the end of your video, still having 50% of your audience watching and engaged with your content. Now I know you're thinking, what do you mean only 50%? Trust me, if you can get 50% to the end of your video, that is a really, really high performing video. Usually you could end up somewhere around 30% and below. So if you can get to 50% at the end of your video, that's a really big win. So what I want you to do is go into your videos and select one and go look at the average view duration and when that 50% mark hits. You may find that it could be in the middle of the video. You're hoping though it's at the three quarter mark or at the end of the video. So if you also see a graph that looks like like this where it goes down dramatically and then flat lines out after that a lot of the time that is indicating clickbait people are clicking in they think they're gonna see a video about a particular thing find out it's not about that and they bounce and YouTube is actually not going to reward a video like that because they're looking for videos that keep people on the platform and keep people binging if this is making sense to you will you drop a comment with hashtag binge watch I want to know that you made it this far in the video, okay? So that's how I know that you got to this far in the video. Hashtag binge watch, go comment that down below. So here's one thing that I want you to think about. If only 50% of the people are making it to the end of your video, it may not make that much sense for you to put your call to action, such as, hey guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. It may not be actually worth it to put it at the end of the video because only half of the people, if you're really lucky, are going to ever see that message. So that's why a lot of creators will put it in the middle of the video or towards the beginning of the video where they still have more people coming in and not dropping off yet. Okay, now I bet you thought I was done, but I have one bonus tip for you. I think it's really, really important if you take a look at the suggested videos and how you access that is if you go into your traffic sources and then you go off of suggested and you scroll down. If you go into traffic sources, this is a gold mine of information. This is where people are finding your videos right after watching one of these videos. So what that means is they were looking for some sort of answer to a question, they didn't get it, your video came up as suggested maybe right after, or they saw the thumbnail, they clicked on it, and they watched your video. So if you go look at it, you're gonna see a lot of common things. So you can see in a list of videos here, if there are 40 videos all about iMovie editing that are all suggesting your content where people are coming first before they come to your video, that might be a hole in the market where you could create a video that answers whatever that question was and then you can have a higher chance of ranking for it because you already know that people are searching for it and not finding the final answer that they were looking for. Otherwise, they wouldn't have then come into your video right after. So I hope this goes to show that YouTube analytics is not that scary and if you just start with a few key pieces of information, you are gonna be so much farther ahead so now you know more about click-through rate, average view duration, the 50% drop-off cliff, and suggested videos. Is that? I don't think that was right counting, was it? Anyways, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. We'd love to have you be part of the squad. I hope you come back for the next video in the series. We're going to be talking all about how to make money on YouTube. So you don't want to miss that. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.